Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials Video 29. It's on the electric field of a dipole. And when I say dipole, the one thing that jumps to mind is a magnetic dipole. A magnet has a permanent north pole and a south pole. But is there an analog in electrostatics? Do we have a permanent electrostatic magnet? We do. It's called an electret, and it was developed in the 1960s. And what scientists do is they take something that's an insulator, generally like wax, they melt it so it's a liquid, and then they apply high voltage to it. And what it'll do is it'll polarize those atoms. And then as it becomes a solid, you have a solid permanent electret. Um, so it's going to have a permanent charge. And these are actually really important in electronics. If you have a smartphone, then the microphone inside it is probably an electret because it doesn't require any energy. It's permanently charged. And so far we've talked about monopoles, where we have a point charge or a sphere, and we can see that where those electric field lines are going to go out from that since it's positive. Or if it's negative, they're going to come in. But we've only dealt with them separately. What happens if we bring those two charges right next to each other? We've now created a dipole. And to understand what's going on, for example, right here, when we have the addition of those two electric field vectors, we have to use vector addition. And that'll allow us to figure out at any point around this dipole what's the net electric field. And what you get is a map that looks somewhat like this. It's crazy. Um, and by the end of this, if you really understand vector addition, you should be able to take a point within up to four different charges and feel where that electric field is pointing. And to understand that, you really have to understand vector addition. So remember a vector not only has magnitude, so magnitude of the electric field, but it also has the direction. And the magnitude is the length, and then the direction is going to be in which way that arrow points. And so imagine if we have one point being acted on by two electric fields. And one of them, we'll say, is pointed in that direction, and the other one on this point is pointed in that direction. So what's the sum? It's the green arrow. And so how does that work? Well, if you line the vectors up, tail to head and tail to head, what you'll find is they're going to add up to that green. Let's say we've got a point being acted on by these two electric fields. That would be the sum. Again, if we go tail to tip, tail to tip, you can see our sum. And we could get really complex with this. We could have uh, up to six different fields. I mean, an infinite number of fields acting on one point. And so if we want to figure out the sum, all we do is start putting them together, tail to tip, tail to tip. And by combining all those vectors, we can figure out what is the sum, and we get right to the tip of that green point. And so to show you this, we're going to use a PHET simulation. What I've got here is a monopole. And so we put a positive charge right here, and then we have these E sensors around the outside. What they're measuring is the strength of the electric field. And so you can see, as we move farther and farther away, the strength of the electric field is going to drop off. Now if we take a negative charge, if we put a negative charge right here, you can see the field lines are pointed towards the charge, but it's the same kind of a relationship. And this is going to be that inverse square of the radius. But since we're dealing with dipoles, what I've done is let's change the opacity of this one. Now let's just kind of overlap those two fields. And so what we could say is let's do a vector addition right here. And so this positive is pushing on this in that direction. The negative is pulling on it in that direction. So if we add those two arrows up, I'm adding this one to that one, I should get a net electric field that's pointed in that direction. Or if we go over here, this one's pulling in that direction, this one's pushing in the other direction, our net force should be right here, a net electric field. If we were to go down here, for example, in that direction, in that direction, and so our sum should be somewhere like right here. And so now I've overlapped all of the sum of these two point charges. Now we're looking at the vector of a dipole itself. And if we were to do that for every point around these charges, we start to get an electric field. And so if we clean that up a little bit, you can see that this is the electric field of a dipole. And the only way we could have figured out what's going on at any of these points is by summing up those vectors of the individual point charges by themselves. And so let's do a little bit of application of this. What we've got here is a negative charge here, and then we have three positive charges, and they're acting on this one point here. So could you just figure out in your head which way is the net electric field is going to be forcing? Well, if you think about it, this positive and this positive are both pushing against that point, and so we could say that 
that they cancel each other out. This positive would be pushing in that direction and the negative would actually be pulling in that direction. And so we would see a sum that's going to look something like that. What if we were to put a point down here? Could you figure out which way it's going to point here? I mean, you can pause the video before I show you the answer. Okay, but if we look right here, so these two are kind of canceling each other out. This positive is pushing away in this direction. This negative is pulling in that direction. But since it's farther away here than it was here, we'd have a smaller arrow that's going to be pointed in that direction. And we can actually make this quantitative as well. And so let's say we've got a point right here. So this is a negative charge. And then we're measuring it at this one point. And then again, let's put this in two images. So it's the same point, but now we've got a negative charge over here. This one is around 9 volts per meter. And this is 9 volts per meter down. If I want to add those up, I could overlap them. Or I could do vector addition. And so if I create a triangle, we've got a 9 on this side, a 9 on that side. So to figure that out, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 9 squared, which is 81, plus 81. So to figure out what that hypotenuse is, it's the square root of 162. Or it's around 12.7. And so did you learn to distinguish uh, between a monopole, that's when we've just got one point or one sphere, and a dipole? And then finally, did you learn how to use vector addition to figure out the magnitude of the net electric field on up to four points? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.